Charter. And we hear from David Cameron, apparently, that we're all in this together. Uh, and I think one of the, message I, one of the messages I want to support is the fact that actually we're not all in this together whatsoever. There is a fundamental division in society between those at the top and the vast majority of uh, the rest of us. My union uh, is uh, a bit old fashioned. Uh, we never uh, merged and we've uh, got the same logo we had 60 years ago, we've got the same name we had 90 years ago, uh, and it does what it says on the tin. And in the preamble to our rule book, uh, there is some, the people who uh, built our union, I think, were very uh, far sighted. And they recognised, for example, this difference of interest because they said that working people will only make progress by their own efforts. And they said that firefighters, to make progress themselves, need to be part of a wider movement, and they call it the working class movement. And I think that's the agenda that we have with the People's Charter, to reinvigorate the working class movement. Because when we look at uh, those people who've lost their jobs over the past year, 18 months, it's not because those jobs haven't been useful. Many of you will be familiar with the debate and the occupation of Vestas, a wind turbine uh, factory. Those people uh, didn't lose their jobs because uh, what they were doing wasn't socially useful. Nobody can claim that. No, they lost their jobs because that particular firm didn't find it profitable to carry on producing investors. And the political crisis that we face is this. That all the main parties in Britain, in fact all the main parties throughout the Western world, do not have any alternative to present to people. Uh, and the reality is that we've been told for 30 years or more that there is no alternative to the system we face today. There is no alternative to the market uh, domination uh, of, of society. And over that period, as that has become the consensus, what have we seen even before the emergence of the latest crisis? We've seen growing inequality. We've seen poverty at one end and extreme uh, and disgraceful, disgusting wealth at the other extreme. We've seen our rights, our trade union rights, restricted increasingly. We've seen uh, a culture of tax avoidance and tax evasion uh, among big business and billionaires in this country and elsewhere. We've seen our public services handed over to spirits because the culture, the ideology, is that they are better placed to run our public services than democratic local authorities or, or the public themselves. So there is very much a difference, uh, and I think it's a class difference, between how this crisis affects people. So we are not all in this together. You know, if you watch the telly, we, we're told on various programs, all you need to do is buy a couple of houses, do it all, and you turn yourself into a millionaire. The reality for the vast majority of people is very, very different. Figures from last year, for example, show that the average person, if you uh, add it all up and divide it, the average person has savings of £2,400, enough to last the average person 52 days uh, without work. 36% uh, of people have savings of less than £500. And then you contrast that with the debt of households in Britain today. Excluded mortgages, the average debt, £9,500. That shows the reality of life for people in Britain today. And it makes a mockery of the idea that we don't live in a class divided society. And we need to remember that despite what we've been told by politicians, that the market that capitalism can solve all our problems is precisely that market system that has led to the problems that we face today. We were promised by Gordon Brown an end to boom and bust. Well, he got it half right. We've seen an end to boom and lots of people are now going bust. And we need to remind Gordon Brown as well that he said in a speech at the Mansion House a couple of years ago that he looked forward to a new golden age of banking in Britain. What a nonsense uh, that was. And in that political vacuum, that means that we need to create an alternative. And I think trade unions uh, are key to that. Trade unions are the first line of defence of working people. And trade unions have the uh, ability and the opportunity to develop an alternative vision of a way forward, an alternative vision that puts people first, people before the needs of multinational banks, people before the needs of profit. And a key challenge there is the battle for ideas. 